get one of that three now. Okay, my name is Daniel Barraza, for those that don't know me. Um, I've been with my home group since 2012. I was actually, when I joined my home group, they only had 13 agents when I joined my home group back then. And then now, obviously, there's over like 1,500 agents or something like that. So my home group blew up, and I blew up with them uh, the same, along the same time. I think we should close that door, huh? <laughs> So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the reasons why I believe that I blew up as a, as an agent, um, and uh, my, um, obviously I saw the growth of my home group and um, seeing the way the brokerage has blown up has been crazy. It's just it's just unbelievable uh, watching uh, my home group blow up like this, grow like this, and I was very fortunate to be uh, there with them along the ride because along the ride I also got to meet a lot of, a lot of a lot of good people uh, along this ride, and one of some of those people I got to meet was obviously was John Sheplack, which is the first coach uh, for Mark and Jeremy. He was also my first coach, um, so we got to meet a lot of cool people. And but I'm going to present to you. I'm going to show you what I've done in my personal business to become uh, successful. Now, I do have a team, but the things that I'm showing you and teaching you have been my personal production, my personal, I what I've done. Okay. Um, and I say that because a, a lot of team leads uh, run their business as a team leader. Um, they have agents and they're, they just recruit agents and, and grow the team. I'm in production. Okay, I've been in production since day one. I'm still in production now. Um, and although I do have a, a team of agents, they do their own production, but I still do my production. Okay? And what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the things that I've done now. As, you're, as I'm showing you this and as we're going through this, just understand, when I first started this, I wasn't doing it at the level that I'm going to show you I'm doing it today. Back then, I was in lane number one, right, when I was first starting, and then I got to lane number two as my business started growing. Now I'm in the fast lane, so I'm doing the, I'm, you know, I'm doing this stuff, and the, the amount of money I put into it now in my database, obviously, is because of the things that I've done. So, and I say that because if you're a new agent and you're starting out and you say, wow, you know, Daniel spends, you know, $5,000 a month on his database, I need to do that too. If you're starting off, obviously, when I started off, I didn't spend anything in my database but my time, uh, giving them calls and handwriting, happy birthday cards. So, it's knowing where your lane is at, right? Knowing what lane you're in. You can apply all these things that I'm showing you. And as a matter of fact, I even gave you guys right there, um, I named it the 56 week uh, touches but it's really 52 weeks because it's 52 weeks in a year like uh, the gentleman in the front mentioned but i put 56 weeks because if you notice the whole calendar i i did it for a year and four weeks so i i, I scheduled it for 56 weeks um, that's the reason i put 56 touches because there's always something for me to do each and every week this is what i focus on this is what i do uh every single week i'm focusing on one thing right uh gary keller's book the one thing Love that book, and, and that book is about focusing on your one thing, focusing on one item that you can accomplish, that you can do for this week, and this is everything I do. Every, every week, I have something that I need to focus, focus on, something that I need to do. Uh, for example, my letter to the heart just went out two weeks ago. The LOH, that's on number week number 39, uh, which is about the second week of July. Um, this week, I should be focusing on calling my uh, favorite 50 favorite people. And the next week, I'm going to do the top 250. The EOS stands for Evidence of Success. Okay. So if, I don't know if everybody already got one, but this this is what I'm looking at right now. This is a 56 week touches. This is what I do every single week. I'm focusing on one thing, and it's right here, right in front of me. Okay. So I have this. Literally, I have one in my car, in my truck, have one in my room. I have one in my office, I have one in my kitchen, in the kitchen I have one of these copies everywhere that is close to me so I can know what am I focusing on this week and I pick this up and what I need to focus on next week, what do I need to be looking at in the near future. For example, right before I came into the building, I was outside talking to my assistant Casey and she told me, you're doing a happy hour, where do you want to do it, let's plan that out now. So uh, obviously I'm planning that ahead of time, right? Um, so I'm gonna go over the I'm gonna go over this really quick the what the acronyms are what the abbreviations are uh, the very first one you see 
VIP number one. And week number one, you see us as VIP dinner. I used to name it client appreciation dinner, uh, but I had to change that just to be in compliance because there's so many rules now. You want to be in compliance, and I plan on being a real estate agent for as long as I can, so I don't want to get in trouble. And apparently, if you say client appreciation and you do something for them like a nice dinner, you can be doing some type of restful violation. It is so dumb, but that's just the way the rules are. So I don't want to get in trouble, so I changed my name from VIP dinner, I mean from client appreciation dinner to VIP dinner. Because now they're just very important people in my life. I'm not saying I'm doing a dinner because I appreciate you. Sounds so silly, right? But that's just the way it is, okay? So the VIP dinner, that's what it's, that's what it's, it's a dinner for my top clients. Okay, now, I know I'm jumping around everywhere. Before I get into that, change the page. On the bottom is a little legend. Everything highlighted in yellow is my overall database. Everything highlighted in green is my client database. Everything highlighted in blue is for my top 150 list, okay? I'll, I'll write that up here in a little bit. One of the first things when we met with John Shep, like one of the very first things that he told me when I sat down with him, he said, every day grow your database and every day add value to it. And I'll never forget those words. It was back in 2012 when I, uh, I was with my homer for like six months and we went to go meet him in Vegas and uh, I sat down with him and here's his, you know, he's a, he's a coach. Uh, a real estate coach and he's in his little tank top and his muscles bulging out and he has a hat that comes down to here. I mean, he dresses really nice now, but back then that's the way he, I, I sat in front of him like, and he's very intense and he says, every day, grow your database and every day add value to it. And I'm only one year in the business, so I don't quite grasp what he's trying to tell me. So he repeats it, he repeats it like two or three times. Every day, grow your database, and every day, add value to it. So, okay, I got it, and, he, and I, was, I didn't bring anything with me. Now, I remember I didn't bring anything with me because I didn't know I was supposed to meet with him until like 30 minutes before I met with him, so I didn't have anything to write down. He said, you're not writing anything down. Do you even have a database? I'm like, well, yeah, like, I got my phone, I got contacts in my phone. I was like, no, your database, where you, got, you get your buyers and sellers from, your database, your client database, every day you want to grow that. What is, tell me where is the last sign call? Do you have, he knows that, you know, he says you have listings out. Tell me the last sign call you got. Who was it? Well, I don't know. I mean, it, I think I wrote it down somewhere on a piece of paper. Where is it? Do you have the phone number? Do you have the email? Well, they didn't, they don't want to give me their email. What's their name? I don't, I mean, I have it written down somewhere. So you're not growing your database. You need to be intentional about this. Every day you want to grow your database. And your overall database, all right, here's your overall database. Your overall database is every single person that calls you or talks to you about real estate. Sign calls, Zillow lead, open houses. You're, you go to a, barbe a family barbecue and your cousin asks you this question, how's the market? You know, hey cousin, Billy, the market is crazy right now. I need your email because you just asked me a real estate related question. I need to grow my database? What's your email? Capture their email, capture their name, and I'm serious about that. Anybody has ever talked to you about real estate, you want to add them to the database. Whether it's an Excel spreadsheet, whether it's Shebang, whether it's whatever it is, you want to have something, even if it's an, a, a note, you know, notebook, you want to have somewhere you can grow your overall database. And as much as information that you can get, the better. So phone number, obviously, is a good one. The first and last name is also very important. It's not if they... You have to get the first and last name, at least they're the you know the initial of their last name because after you have you know twenty uh, Jose's or twenty Maria's in there, you don't know which one is which. So having a last name is also really good. Capture as much as information as you can. Phone number, well first of all name, phone number, email address, and their property address. That one's a huge one. Getting their property address. I don't. You say, well I'm not going to mail them anything. It doesn't matter. Their property address is. You can find out, you can investigate if they're renting, if they're living with mom and dad, or if they own the darn thing. And if they own the property, that's a potential future seller lead that is in the seller house with you. So every day, you grow your database, and then you, and you add value to it. So your overall database is everyone who ever reaches out to you, okay? Everyone who 
reaches out to you. And those are the same people that you add from your open houses to that give you the information? Yes. Everyone. Zillow leads. Facebook leads. Google leads. Commission Zing leads from your team lead. Every single person you add on to your overall database. Within your overall database, you're going to have another category, which is your client database. These are the people who buy and sell with you, right? These are your people who have actually, who actually buy or sell with you. But you have, if somebody's a client and an overall, you have them in two places or just in the one? So it's, the way I have it in my CRM, the CRM I use is called Big Purple Dot. So on there, I'll have somebody who's a potential buyer. Once they become an actual client where they bought the house, then on there, I'll highlight, there's a tag on there I can highlight them green. So they are an actual past client. So they're in the same overall database, but in my overall database, they're tagged as an actual client. Because I treat them a little different than my overall database. I give value to them a little different than I give value to my overall database. And I'm gonna show you how, in this 56 week, how I add, how I add value to on my all database, okay? And then there's even another category. It's your top, for me it's top 150 list. Depending on how long you've been doing this, it can be your, that list can be your top uh, 20 list, uh, it can be your top 50 list, your top 100 list, it doesn't matter. But the idea is to get an actual list of people who are your favorite people, and I'm gonna break that down to three different categories, okay? Top 50 list, and by the way, this idea came from the core training. Um, if you're not familiar with the core training, it's, uh, they've been around for years, and it was by Rick Ruby, who's a loan officer, I think he's out of Dallas, Texas, I believe, but he's a pretty big uh, loan officer out there, and he created this coaching program called the core training, and I used to do that when I first was an agent. It's still around, um, it's pricier now, uh, but this is that, I got this concept from that, okay? The top 150 list is breaking down into three different categories, and it is your 50 favorite, your, sorry, your 50 favorite people, favorite people, your top 50 clients, and your top 50 business people. I'm going to show what the difference is between those three. So these three make up my top 150 list. Okay. Your 50 favorite people are people who refer business to you. They're also people who are your fans. It can be your aunt, right? It can be a cousin. It can be your friend from high school that she or he sees you're in real estate now. And anyone who posts on their, you know, on their Facebook, I'm even looking for a real estate agent, and your friend from high school tags you all the time. They should be in your top 50 favorite people because they're your fan. They like you. They're out there. They're, they're your billboard, right? So you want to treat them well. You want to be nice to them. So you make them, you put them in this category because they are your fans. They can also be people you would like to do business with. For example, you know, a yoga instructor, a mentor, your neighbor, your, you know, you're, you're in a soccer mom's club. You put them in there, okay? You're a, a pastor, a professor. You want to have people that you would like to do business with. Anybody that you add in here, by the way, you are keeping a close eye on them, and I'll show you how later. Top 50 clients is just what it is. It's your clients that have bought or sold with you, but they're your favorite ones. Now, depends how many, how much business you've done. If you've only done, let's say, 20 transactions, out of those 20, you want to get your top, I don't know, your top 10 favorite ones, right? If all 20 more are your favorite, fine, put them in your top 20. But eventually, you only want to grow to about 50, okay? Maybe 60, maximum 70, unless you have help, someone helping you uh, manage as many people. It's impossible to keep up with 500 people. There's no way, you can't do it. If somebody once said, Facebook is my database. It's impossible to keep up with 500 people, 700 people, you can't. You can manage keeping with 150 people, that's pretty easy to do you know, yourself. Uh, maybe with help, you can go up to 200, 250 people, okay? So top 50 clients, um, just because somebody bought or sold with you, um, if you don't like them or they don't like you, because 
I don't. I, I have clients that don't like me. Okay, I have clients that <laughs> we did the transaction closed and they cuss me out at the end of it. You know, I, I don't add them to. I don't add them to this list, right? <laughs> they're over here in my overall data, my uh, client database because they bought or sold with me, but they're not in my top fifty clients. Because my top fifty clients, I take care of them. They get gifts from me. They get. I, they get calls from me. They get invited. They I, they get invited to my my. Not my client appreciation events, my VIP events, all right? They get special perks because they're my top clients. So not only do they buy or sell with me, but they refer people to me. They're my fans. Anytime I put something on Facebook, they share the living snot out of it, right? They're, they're my raving fans, okay? And then there's your top 50 business people. In my personal database, by the way, I'm slacking on this area. My top 50 business people, I probably only have like 23, 24 people in there. Um, uh, so I need to get that back up. But 50 business people can be people that have the potential to refer a lot of business to you. Can you guys give me some examples? How about divorce attorney? That's a business person. How about, you know, for my, from, for my business, two of my biggest lead sources are in this list. One of them is a landscaper and the other one is an investor. He flips houses, buys houses. The majority of the houses he finds on his own, but once he fixes them up, he calls me up and I list them for him. Obviously, I give him a discount because I probably list about 25, 26 houses a year. So I give him a discount on the commission, obviously, with that much business I'm going to. Um, so that's where my two biggest referral sources come from. Another big referral source for me that I have in my 50 business people is uh, Tax preparers. Tax preparers during tax season, my goodness, they refer a lot of business, a lot of business. CPAs, they can have the potential to refer a lot of business. Builders, builders have the potential to refer a lot of business as well. Uh, some of the, some of the, you know, just to name a few, uh, Bobby Lee does a lot of business in Central Phoenix. One of his biggest sources happens to be a divorce attorneys. That's how he gets a lot of his business in the Central Corridor area. Um, someone from Keller Williams, I forget her name all the time, but she has a, she's a top producer, Beth Ryder. She gets a lot of builder business. She has, I mean, you can get, if, you just, if, if an agent just focuses solely on business people, they can be, you know, mega agents, solely on business people. Um, if you can work and write. I have, I'm not that good at it, I'm slacking in that area. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I do have some business people on there, tax preparers, uh, you know, investors, uh, divorce attorneys, CPAs, even people that own a restaurant, people that own uh, barbers. Barbers refer a ton of business. Barbers refer a ton of business. Be friends with them. I'm actually listing the girl who cuts my hair. I'm listing her house, and she's referred two other people to me. You don't go to a barber. I do now. My wife didn't want to cut my hair anymore. Oh, what if you don't go to a barber? You're your, your stylist, hair stylist. You know, there's different clientele, barbers and they hairstylist. they talk to a lot of people. You know? I know what you're saying is a yeah, even a, so, uh, hair stylist, <laughs> whatever you want to name it. They wouldn't want to go to a barber. <laughs> yes. So if you have team members, they do you have them create their own? Yes. Okay, so if they're kind of new, just narrow those numbers down. But they create their so own. So if they're new, I have them do a top fifty instead of one hundred and fifty, a top fifty list. Okay. Um, I'm having to do, uh, I think it's 15, 15, and 15, I don't know if it's 45, but trying to get to a top 50 list. And then slowly, as their business grows, those should grow as well. This list, by the way, I mean, I could do a whole class on this, and that's not the reason for my class. The reason for my class was talking about how to touch your clients, how to reach out to your clients without being annoying, right? Nobody wants to be that annoying person that is, hey, you have somebody who wants to buy or sell? Hey, you have any referrals for me? Hey, you know anybody who wants to buy or sell? Hey, you want, eventually, you know, your cousins, aunts, and uncles are going to stop inviting you to the barbecues or to the birthday parties. <laughs> it's going to happen. So you don't want to be that annoying person. Even on Facebook, right? On Facebook, people start tuning you out. People start, the more engagement you get on your Facebook, the more people get, anytime you post something, you come up on their wall. But just because you're friends with somebody doesn't mean that anything you post, they're going to see you. If somebody that's on your Facebook group, if you're friends with them, if they tune you out enough to where they don't like or they don't press anything on the post, stuff that you post, eventually you'll never, you'll never come out, no matter what you post, you'll never come out again on their wall, on their feed. Does that make sense? 
You'll never come out on their feet. So you want to put stuff and add value to where they can comment and engage uh, so you can have some type of engagement. And trust me, you saying my house that I got my buyer in the car just appraised, the majority of the people on your friends list do not care about that. They just don't. That's just, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. I know your mom's super proud of you, but the rest of your, the rest of your friends list do not care. Okay. So that's your top, my top 150. So what I do right here on the second page, you'll see the colors. So my, the ones highlighted in yellow, that's my overall database. That's how I reach out to my overall database. The ones highlighted in green, that's my client database. These are everybody who has bought or sold with me. And then the ones highlighted in blue is my top 150 list. Personally, for my overall database right now, it's about 4,500 people, give or take. Uh, my client database is about 350 people, and my top 150 list is probably right now is probably about one, maybe 165 or so. That list is never going to be perfect, okay? So, so if you're a perfectionist, this list will never be perfect, and that's okay. It's always you're always working on it, always working on it. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, when somebody in your top favorite top 150 list ends up buying a house with somebody else, you need to kick them out of that list and add somebody else in that list, okay? You don't want to put people in that list that are buying a house with another agent. You automatically kick them out. And last, it's like a business pe person that's referring you a lot of business, but their, you know, their kid is a real estate agent or something like that. Then, okay, that's different, okay? All right. Have you lost friends over that? I've lost, cl not friends, I've lost clients. Right now, the market being so good, there's a lot of people getting a roasted license, and I've had a lot of people in my top 150, um, my top favorite clients, top 50 clients, that their husband got the roasted license, their you know, son got the license, their uncle got the license there. Mm -hmm. So I have lost a lot of referrals, not friends. I'm gonna take friends with them because there's that two year mark. If they don't make the two, they, their cuz, their, I don't know, their significant other tries real estate for a year or two, it doesn't work out. I'm still friends with them. So I'm not going to cuss them out and then I lose them forever, right? <laughs> and it has happened. Mm -hmm. And it has happened where an actual, this, um, one of my top favorite, one of my top clients who referred a lot of business to me, her sister got a real estate license and I'm like, shoot, she would refer at least one client a month. She was a nurse. So she would refer a lot of people. I'm like, oh, darn it. But oh, well, it happens. I was still friends with her. I would comment once in a while on her pictures, whatever. Uh, her sister only lasted about a, like a year and two months as a real estate agent, and then hello, here I'm still here, and she started referring business back. So for a good year, I stopped, I stopped getting referrals, and then I got referrals back again. And if she gets her license again, I've had a conversation with the sister. If she gets her license again, you're gonna join my team, okay? That's, so we had that conversation already. All right, any questions on that? Now I'm gonna get into how I add value to all in my overall database, my client database, and my top 150 list, okay? Okay, so I started off back in mid-October 2017. I started preparing for my VIP dinner that I hosted it in, on November 16th, the second week of November. You notice that VIP dinner took five weeks, actually it took a little bit more because if you go to week seven, I send out thank you cards to all the VIP guests. And then on week number eight, I did follow-up calls to the VIP non-guests that for whatever reason couldn't make it. Then I call them, make sure everything's okay, yeah. Is your VIP called the overall or your client database? It's it's in blue, so the ones in blue will oh, be okay. my top 150 okay. list. Oh, your top 150. See that? Okay. So everything that is in blue is my top 150 list. Okay. Everything that is in green is my client database, and everything that is in yellow is my overall. So basically 165 people in your back. Right. Okay. And if you notice, I put it in here, I put another sheet. That breaks it down a little bit better. Who gets invited to what? Um, I recently changed that, that my happy hours, I no longer invite my overall database because that can be very pricey. So I no longer invite my overall database to that. I only invite uh, my uh, client database and top 150. But on here shows you how I act, who gets what. Okay, now, um, I didn't, Casey did this one wrong. Normally, the, the, my original one that I have like this, on those X's, I, the X for birthday gifts for my client database, it should be a lowercase X, not an uppercase X. 
Same thing with the Christmas gifts, it's a lowercase x for the client database and letter of the heart should be a lowercase x. Uppercase x are for the top 150 because their birthday cakes and their Christmas gifts is a lot bigger than my client database. Does that make sense? For example, and I'll show you a picture. Oh, that's the that's form I just talked about right now. Like who gets invited to what, who gets what. Who gets the blogs? B day, that's birthday gifts, Christmas, Xmas is Christmas. LH is letter of the heart. VIP events is the client events. Only my top 150 gets invited to that. Mother's Day, uh, I can do Mother's Day cakes, a cheesecake, homemade cheesecake. Only my top 150 get that get those. And then life events. And I'll tell you what that is here in a little bit. Here, oh, last one. Right. Here's a picture of. Does it have a light? No. Yeah, it does have a light. So here's a picture. Oh, but I can't point on this. This small cake right here is for my client database. Gets that little small cake for their birthday. It's something, right? It's a little small cake. They're appreciative. They take a picture of it. They put it on Facebook. See that big, the big box of cakes there? That's my for my top 150. That will cost a little bit more. That little cake, that black cake, I probably buy it for like five bucks, four bucks. Another ten dollars for delivery. So I spent fifteen dollars for sending out cakes to 350 people a year. But this box costs about twenty nine bucks, and also ten dollars for delivery. That one goes for my top 150 list. Okay, they're a little bit more important because they've already bought or sold me. They refer people to me, so I treat them a little bit, you know, I treat them more special. They can invite to my VIP events. They refer people to me. They're my radio fans. They're my cheerleaders. They're walking billboards. I'm going to treat them right. Listen, I know it sounds pricey, but trust me, it's cheaper than putting money on Zillow. Way cheaper than putting money on Zillow, Realtor.com, and putting money on Google AdWords and Facebook. This is a lot cheaper, and the return on the investment is a lot better, okay? Last year, I closed 140 houses. 80% uh, of the business came from this top 150 list, okay? All right. So going back to number, week number six, LOH stands for Letter of the Heart. That, what color is that in? That's in green. So what does that go out to? It goes out to the client database. Okay, so I send out about 350 letters out. Question? Just on the dinner, did you do a restaurant? Did you? Yeah, good question. That one, I got a picture of it right here. That was this one, that one, this dinner was at the Henry. So it was, this is a picture of that. Some other events, this was at the Sierra Bonita. Some other events is like down here, that's like a kind of like a picnic, carnival style. That was a different one that I did two years ago. This was the one that I did this past November. Uh, and then movie, uh, VIP movie for the clients, I do like a movie event, I do that once a year. Uh, so yeah, this one in particular was at the Henry. It came out to about, with the wine and alcohol, it came out to about $85 per, per plate. Um, not all 150 show up, you know, not all 150 show up. To the events, I think about maybe 50, 60% of them show up. For some reason, uh, when you do events that, like this one down here where they can bring their kids, or this one where they can bring their kids, I mean, all of them show up. From, I think when you do events where people can, where their clients can bring their kids, they will come. But a lot of them, maybe they don't have babysitters, I don't know what it is. When I do events like this where they can't bring their kids, only half of them show up, or this one. So really about 70 people showed up to that, to this event. It's actually less than half from 165 down to 70 people that showed up to that. But $85 per plate, I mean, it does get pricey. I don't have to pay all of it. I pay about a third of it, right? Because uh, I got vendors that help me out, right? Uh, title companies that help me out and the loan officer that helps me out that they benefit from these same clients too. And I've been using, I've been using the same lender for six years now. So... And she's, uh, she's actually number two loan officer in the entire state, number one female loan officer, Lizzie Hofer. That's the loan officer I've been using for years. And uh, so a lot of my clients, a lot of my top 150 clients that, I, that go there, they know her. You know, so I'm walking around, at these events, I'm walking around talking to my clients, saying thank you to, for coming, having my face to face. Lizzie, my loan officer, she's doing the same thing. It's like if it was her client event because these are all the same clients, right? So the, the title company and... And the home warranty also, you know, helps out a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So a lot of my clients, they mutual clients, they know her as well. Okay. Does that make sense? So I'm not, I'm not forking over the six thousand dollars for the bill. I am putting like two grand. Right. Again, stay in your lane. Right. Not that you're gonna do an event like this, but hey, maybe you can do one that's only a thousand bucks, you know, or nine hundred bucks, and you pay three hundred bucks, and your vendors pay the other six hundred. Does that make sense? So, stay in your lane. Uh, when I first started, I didn't start off with the big dinner like this. This is the first time I do I do that, right? After five years of doing this, then I gradually went up to doing a dinner at the hand. Okay. All right. Number six, L O H. That's letter of the hearts. Letter of the hearts. And here's a sample of one. Oh, you actually got a sample of one there, and um, I give you a copy of a sample of a letter of the hearts. This letter of the heart says, hello, so glad you got this letter and thank you for taking the moment to read it. I wanted to share with you a little bit of, of my history. I was raised in this church. I was, a, I was that toddler sleeping under the pews every service. <laughs> Born and raised here in Phoenix, I am grateful my parents took me to a Spanish church. That is where I learned how to read and write Spanish. Special thanks to my Sunday school teacher. Uh, she was actually my aunt, my tia Elena Rivas. My son, Yashua, needs a tia Elena in his life. He barely mutters a word of Spanish. I know, I know, shame on me. I'm working on it, and I really am. He just doesn't want to speak Spanish to me. <laughs> Growing up in the church molded, molded me not only, molded not only my faith and Spanish, but also my adulthood. I served as a youth minister, Sunday school teacher, and attended Bible college early on. I knew my purpose on earth, on earth was to glorify God. To me, the definition of that has changed as I have aged. In my adolescence, I thought the only way to bring glory to God was by going to church. So I went almost every day. Then as I got older, I thought the best way to give glory to God was to be in prayer, worship, meditation, and study the Bible. So I did that. I even went as far as to enroll in a Bible college. I was so spiritual, I was earthly useless. Don't get me wrong, all those ways I mentioned do honor God, but the best way to glorify God is to serve, honor, and love what He loves the most, and that is people. We show our love to God by loving people. We serve God by serving people. We honor God by honoring people. Jesus told his disciples, Matthew 25, blessed are those, blessed are you for when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. I needed clothes, you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. The disciples looked at one another confused and asked, what, when did we see you hungry? And feed you. When were you thirsty and we give you something to drink? When did when did we see you as a stranger and invited you in? Or needing clothes and clothed you? When did you when were you sick and in prison and we visited you? The reply to Jesus to them are the words I try to live by today. Truly I tell you, whatever you do for the least of these, you did it to me. Today my definition of, glor of glorifying God lies in the way I serve, honor, and love people. I'll confess something to you. It gets on my nerves when someone from the church asks, when are you going to serve God again? Don't you miss serving God? I feel like grabbing my 10-pound Bible and hitting them upside the head. I'm joking. And still my response is, I used to serve within the four walls of the church and bless those who still do, but today I still serve God by helping others meet their real estate goals. You see, I did not choose to get my real estate license to be a realtor. It was never a goal of mine to be a real estate agent. It was necessary in order to better serve people who needed my help. The same people I had helped during the crash of the market not lose their homes during, not lose their homes by doing a loan modification. Those same people needed help with short sales and other real estate services. To better serve and honor people was the reason I got my license. It was not money. It was not that I had a family member in the industry. My aunt did not work in a title company, but my wife was not a loan officer. My dad was not a property management. My brother was not a flipper or a broker. No, I simply had a calling to serve and honor people. And in doing so, I get to live my life's purpose to bring glory to God. Honor people, glorify God. That's a letter that defines who I am. I talk about my past, I talk about who I am as a person and my why. This is why I do real estate. So I send out this letter to my uh, to my overall database, everybody who has ever bought or sold with me. Some people may not, you know, very few people may not like it and it's okay. But this is who I am. The letter of the heart comes from your heart. It talks about who you are and 
why you do what you do. You can talk about your fears. You can talk about your failures. You can talk about whatever. Just be open. Be an open book to the people who get these letters. This letter was one I sent out, I believe. Yeah, that's the one I sent out to on Thanksgiving, week number six. Okay? Do you mail it or email it? Mail it. Not email. Mail. These have, these have to be mailed. Definitely mail. Do and you call back on that? I mean, like people uh, say, I mean, people say that. Just about every letter of the heart, I get a few calls. Uh, for example, I talked about when my wife got in a car accident two years ago. So I sent out a letter of the heart that we go through life just running around everywhere, especially as a business owner, right? We're running just always busy, 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 busy. And uh, you get that one phone call that just stops you on your tracks and just changes the course. Like, it doesn't matter who I was going to meet with at 5 p.m., right? When you get that call at 11 a.m., nothing else matters at that one point. But are you okay? How are my kids? How are you, right? That's, that changes everything. So I talked about that, and then I got a few calls, and my wife got a few calls to make sure she was okay, because a lot of people didn't know she got a car accident. Um, when I had my first child, right, I sent out a letter to the heart, and uh, uh, that letter to the heart I talked about, uh, my mom was in the waiting room, and for whatever reason, right, obviously the first thing I did was grab my baby and kiss up and my wife, but the second thing I did is that I ran into the waiting room and I grabbed my mom, and I just, I was like, I was, she was telling me, like, what's the matter? Is Ruby okay? Is, is the baby okay? Why are you crying? It's like, everybody's fine. I'm just, I'm so sorry. And she's like, what are you sorry for? It, I don't know why, but at the moment I grabbed my baby, I, I just think, I just, like, realized this love that I never knew before. And my mom and dad quickly came to my mind that I made them go through so much stuff. <laughs> I was a bad boy in high school. I mean, I was a bad kid. I made them go through so much stuff, and as I was holding this baby, I was like, if this little brat does to me what I did to my parents, so I went to the waiting room and I apologized to my mom and dad because I made them go through so much stuff. So I wrote them the letter of the heart and I got a lot of calls from that as well. So just about every letter of the heart, I do get a few phone calls. So it's a different letter each time. Yeah, of course. Every time it's a, every time it's a letter about you know you something that you're going through something that you want the best way. People are going to refer you because they like you. If you are a jerk, an a-hole, whatever you want to call it, you're not going to get a lot of referrals. You need to be likable. You know, if you're likable, people will refer you. Okay, so the best way to be likable is to be an open book. You know, just expose your heart to them. Show them you're human. Like, show them you're human. They, they, they want to see that you are also just like them. That you also have fears. That you also go through stuff. That they, they want to see that. You know what I mean? And that will get you to be likable. More than any other thing. Letters of the heart. And if you're likable, people will refer you. Hands down. Okay. Um, now, I went, I went back to saying, notice my VIP dinner. It took six, uh, five weeks, but actually it took seven weeks. If you go to week seven and eight, I did the thank you cards that I sent out, and then follow up with um, follow up with phone calls to the people that couldn't make it. Okay. By the way, if because I do a lot of events, as you can see, I do a lot of client events, and I do a lot of calls. If sometimes somebody in my client data, my top fifty or my client database, they're not answering my calls, and I know they're getting my voicemails, and I know they're getting my text, that's a good indication that. Um, they're starting to refer business somewhere else or that they don't want you around anymore, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Um, you just update that list and get somebody else in their spot, okay? All right, EOS, week number 13, that's an EOS. That stands for Evidence of Success. And a sample of an EOS, and at that um, week number 13 and 14, that was actually a video. So here is a, um, let me show you a sample of an EOS. Here's an EOS, right? Um, based on the market with another agent, 250 days under contract in four days with the Barraza team. That's just a sample of an evidence of success. That's what color is that in? It's in yellow. So that goes out to my overall database. You notice my overall database, by the way, uh, week numbers 18 through 22, that only went out to my past clients. That did not go out to um, that VIP happy hour was not to my overall database. It was just 
It should be in green, but it's in yellow. Week 18 through 22. Um, but notice the things that are in yellow, right? The email blast, the video blast, uh, evidence of success. And then again on May, you'll see on week number 29, the week that I prepared the cheesecake preparation for Mother's Day, because it's the second week of May. But that week on Cinco de Mayo, I always send out a Mexican word of the day. Every Cinco de Mayo, I send out a Mexican word of the day. And it's meant to be funny. Um, and a quick example of why you want to grow your database all the time. And before I get to that, you notice that there's only one, two, three, four, including the Mexican word of the day, four, five on week 40, six, week 41, seven, week 43, and eight on week 48. Eight times I send out an email blast that goes to my overall database. That's all they get. They get less than one email a month. If I bombard my overall database with a bunch of emails, an email every day or once a week, they're going to unsubscribe so fast. And you'll lose them. Right? So you don't want to be annoying. How do you reach out to people without being annoying? That's one of them. Don't bombard them with a bunch of emails that don't get open anyways. Okay? They get something from me eight times a year. That's less than one a month. That's higher return on them, higher return rate on um, emails that get open. Okay? Well, quick story on my overall database. I was doing an open house, like on central, just a little bit north of Sunny Slope, going, starting to go on top of the mountain. So, bad area, Sunny Slope, but a little bit on top of the mountain. It starts getting pretty nice. Sunny Slope, by the way, is turning around a lot. Um, but I was doing an open house there. The house was listed about 290000 uh, almost 300000 And this lady walked in, and she was just not nice at all. She walked in and she, I gave her the, you know, the MLS printout sheet and she goes, huh, this house is never going to sell at this price. Look at this, it's so ugly. And she was just really mean. I was like, oh, well, you know, it just hit the market and I've gotten some pretty good activity. No, it's never going to sell. This house, it's so ugly in here. Look at the counter. She was just tearing up the place. But I'm like, whatever, just sign in. So she signs in, and every time somebody signs in, when I add them to my database, there's always a little spot in there that I put my own notes. I put on there, snobby lady. So I put on there, you know, not a nice lady. Uh, fast forward about almost, I think, nine or ten months go by. Cinco de Mayo comes around, and I send out my Mexican word of the day. I never reached out to this lady, though. Normally, I reach out to them, send them a thank you card for coming to my open house. I didn't reach out to her at all. I just added her to my overall database. Mexican word of the day comes out, it was taco, right? And taco was a Mexican word of the day, and it's like a, a, a Mexican guy a Mexican guy with a big mustache and a Mexican sombrero with the Mexico soccer jersey, and it said, Mexican word of the day is taco, let's talk about selling your house. That's all it was. She replied back by saying, ha, ha, ha. So I replied back and said, I'm glad you liked it, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. I didn't know who it was. I just saw her name, but I didn't know who it was. It's about 4,500 people in my overall day, but I'm not going to know every single name. I just replied with, I'm glad you liked it. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Send the email. She replies back, actually, I'm thinking about selling my rental house in Phoenix. So I quickly go open up my big purple dial. Who is this lady? And there I read it, snobby lady. I was like, oh my God, that's the lady that was like talking down my house. And oh my goodness. So I called her up, set an appointment, and I listed her house. It was like on 7th Street, just north of Northern. It was a nice, when I went to look at this house, it was spotless. I can see why she was very nitpicky because this house was perfect in every way. There was nothing wrong with this house. So my point in all that is you do want to reach out to your database, overall database, and you always want to grow it. You always want to add people to it. No matter if you think like, oh, they're never going to buy, just add them in there. And then once in a while you reach out to them, evidence of success, you know, you, uh, uh, something funny, send them a funny email. Don't send, you know, don't send the same thing over and over, like, hey, I got this house under contract. Hey, this house appraised. Hey, here's what the market. Like, don't send the same thing over and over and over. Send something that'll make them laugh. Send something that will make them be like, oh, that's cool. This person, you know, made the top 25 list on my home group, whatever. Like, send something, you know, different. Send something special. And don't bombard them with emails because they'll tune you out. How to reach out to your clients once a week without being annoying. That's one of them. Don't bombard them, but do grow your database and do send them something. You'll never know when they'll reach out to you and sell their house with you. All right, next one. Um, so I already said what evidence, EOS stands for evidence of success. LOH is letter of the heart. And then the green one back on week number 32, that was my movie event that happened on June 21st. I did this movie. I rented out. Originally, I had rented out uh, 150 seats. And then 
my RSVPs went all the way up to 200, and I'm like, shoot. So I raised it to 200 people, and then my final count was like a 230. And I'm like, well, I had to get the 260 room one. Uh, luckily, they were pretty nice about it, and last minute they upgraded me to the 260 room one, and yeah, 230 some people showed up. Um, and that was very inexpensive. That's this one right here. So if that's if you want an idea how to do something inexpensive, a client event, movies are very inexpensive. Uh, I think the whole thing came out to about like 1500 bucks, including, I, that's because I got uh, these little packs, kids pack, where you can give, they can get a little popcorn, soda drink, and candy. I gave out 50 of those. Um, but if I would have just gotten the theater itself, 150 theater would have been like 900 bucks or 800 bucks or something like that. Super inexpensive. And you share that with the vendor also? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All these I share with vendors. Um, it keeps it right, it's in, inexpensive. And plus, my vendors get the business from all this. So, Say, so if you want to get an idea to do a, a, a client event, the movie is one of the best ones, really inexpensive. Uh, happy hours, I want to talk about happy hours really quick. Those are also very, very inexpensive to do. Who cares if only 15 people show up? The referrals and the, the idea about all this is not the actual events. Really, it's not. It's the invitations. If you notice on there, right, for, let's go to the movie one, for example. On week 32, I send out the invites. On week 33, I do an email blast and a voice note blast. On week 34, I do the calls. Pick up my phone, and the whole week, my focus is just to get calls and get RSVPs, okay? Week 35, the final detail preparations, and then week 36 is that reminder calls, the calls again. And then the thank you cards that follow up, and then follow up calls on week 38. The referrals come not on the events, but they come on the phone calls. That's where the referrals come in. The more phone calls you get, you do, the more referrals you're going to get. Does that make sense? So it's, it's more about the, just the events. It's about what you do before the event and after the event, which is call and invite. And then you call to reconfirm that they're going, and then you call the people that didn't show up, and then you send out thank you cards to the people that did show up. All of those calls bring in referrals. Because honestly, and, I, and this is not right, this is wrong. I never once asked them, being completely honest with you, I never once asked, do you know anyone who's buying or selling? Never. I call and say, hey, you know, you, I saw your SVP, but couldn't make it, is everything okay? Oh yeah, something came up last minute, something happened with my wife, this and that. By the way, you know, my neighbor, I was, he was talking about selling, thinking about selling his house, I told him about you. It's like, you know, that's great. Here's my number, that's cool, but if I get their number, that would be a lot better. A few hours later, I get a text with the phone number. The referrals come from the phone calls you're following up with them. Because you're not calling them just to say, hey, you got anybody who wants to buy or sell? You're calling them to add a value, like, hey, I'm doing a client event. You're my favorite client. You're one of my top clients, so I'm calling you to invite you to this event. And they're very appreciative. They know you're a real estate agent, and if they're going to be anybody who's buying or selling, they're going to think about you. Okay, I know my time's almost up. Uh, let me see where I'm at. Market updates. I do a few of those. I don't like um, evidence of success, top 250 list, top 250 in the nation. I always put those. You notice I always put those in July, and I have another one in September for the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. On week 48, that one's in September. I automatically assume I'm going to make the top 250 list in the nation, so I already put it in there. I tell my, my staff, we're going to send out a flyer for the top 250 in the nation, agents in the nation, in July or in August. Well, how do you know you're going to make it? I don't know, but we have to make it because it's in the calendar, so we better make the list. Okay? <laughs> so I automatically assume I'm going to make it, so I put it in there, right? And it kind of gives me, oh, I, I better reach this goal because... It's in my calendar and it's one of my touches out that goes out to my clients. And then finally, um, week 50 is a VIP picnic. Invites go out, voicemail blast, email blast, the calls on week 52, final detail preparations, the actual picnic, and the thank you cards, and the follow-up calls. It says follow-up class. It should be follow-up calls to VIP non-guests. Yeah. What do you suggest when um, you're just building your database and you don't have a little money to even have major events, what, what would you suggest as a, something smaller? So when, when, I, when I first started, I would send, on the birthdays I wouldn't send out cupcakes, I would send out a handwritten thank you card. 
So I'll send them a, I mean, a, a birthday card. I'll send them a birthday card, handwritten. It doesn't cost me anything but the stamp that I put on there. Okay. How many people get birthday cards nowadays? Nobody. Nobody. So when they get it, they feel, it feels pretty special. Uh, so that's pretty inexpensive. I know it's just a 49 cent stamp. It's 49 cents, but still it's something special. 49 or 47 or 49 cents? Something like that. I do a lot of stamps because I send out a lot of a lot of mails. No, not, the, not on the birthday cards. Unless unless it, unless it was like a a client database, then I would like if it was somebody that didn't know me very well. They just bought a house with me like eight months ago. Maybe they forgot who I am. I'll throw the card in there. But if on my top one fifty, they know who I am. I don't have to throw my card in there. Um, other ideas can be. Um, you know, doing, uh, like I mentioned, doing a small happy hour. A small happy hour of 10 or 15 people, you know, that, that's not going to be more than 200 bucks, 250 bucks at most. And you, again, you get your vendors to pay for two thirds of that, and you only pay for 80 bucks for that. And again, the idea is not to get plastered in front of your clients. The idea is to make calls and invite. Because not you're going to invite 40 people, only 15 are going to show up. But you made 40 calls. You're keeping in touch and you're calling them about adding value. You call them to invite them somewhere. Like when I get invited somewhere, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, hey, they thought about it. And it's not a Facebook invite. Those are annoying. Like everybody gets all these. It's an actual invite where you pick up the phone and you call. Hey, I'm doing this really special event and I'm calling you to invite you. They feel special. Yeah. Um, what's your annual budget and ROI? So my ROI is 80% of my business from 140 houses has come from doing all this from my client database. I spend about, I'm going to say about $2,500 a month is what I budget for on all this birthday cakes, on the Mother's Day cakes that get sent out. I send out 95, uh, 95 homemade cheesecakes, $12 a piece, and then another $10 for the delivery. But I deliver like 55 of those. So a lot of those I try to do myself. Um, my wife was kind of upset at me because I was driving around until like 8 or 9 p.m. Uh, she said, why don't you just pay the, the $10 person to deliver it, $10 per delivery. And I said, because this is, when I deliver these cakes, like, their face just lights up. Like, you know, you came and brought me my cake. That's so awesome. I'm like, yeah, I just want to say hi. It's, it's happy Mother's Day. And here's your cheesecake. And the ones I deliver are to, like, the office, place, like, where they work in the office. I'll deliver those. Because uh, what they'll do is, like, come in. I want to show everybody that. You know, you're my realtor, and don't present me to the office people there. Like, yeah, this is my realtor. He brought me this homemade cheesecake. I mean, walking billboards, right? Everywhere. And that's what that that week right there, what week is it? May? So that's week number 30. The week number 30 on week number 31 is where I get my most referrals out of any week of the year. It is the day after I deliver cheesecakes. That's when I get my most referrals. What's the cheesecake delivery for? For Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Okay. Yeah. So since you do them quarterly then, right? About quarterly events? I mean, as far as the big events? Yes, I do four, four client, three or four client events in the year. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Mother's Day cheesecakes. And then I also do the cupcakes for the birthdays. Mm -hmm. And then Christmas, I also send out a small gift. What, you, what company do you use? What company? I use uh, bun cakes for my cakes. Um, the homemade cheesecake my mom makes them, oh so God. I pay. She gets twelve dollars per cake. She's happy. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then what else for the cup? B U N T. Yeah, B U N D T. Bunt cakes. There's one on Fifty Ninth Avenue and Thunderbird. That's the one I use. Yeah. It's funny because somebody somebody walked in there. Like, this is my pop sockets. So somebody walked in there and they're like, Oh my gosh, that's Daniel. You know Daniel? They're like, How do you know Daniel? It's like he gets all the cakes from us. So my clients tell them like, oh my God, you're so popular that I just came into bun cakes and they knew who you were and they gave me a discount because they said you buy so many cakes from them. If Cheesecakes is your number one most referral, why, are, why aren't you doing it more times a year? Why only once? I guess the, um, well, there's only one Mother's Day. I should do maybe, somebody tell me you should do something on Father's Day. I don't know, I'm just asking. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. I don't want to over, you know, do it. Um, I, I had thought about doing something on Father's Day a month later to do something for dads. That way it gets me out in front of more people. Um, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. Okay. I'm, so now I definitely want to do something for, uh, for Father's Day. But I, this slowly started getting to where it's at. It was really hard for me to tell my uh, one of my partners is 
uh, Modesto, whom you know, Jay, uh, was to get him away from spending a lot of money on Zillow. Because Zillow does give you a return of investment. But, you know, showing them, like, hey, we got more return of investment doing this kind of stuff. Why don't we put more money on this and stop spending money on this? And slowly and gradually, we've been spending less on Zillow and more and this kind of stuff. One question back here. When do you find is the best time to try to capture addresses, birth dates, kids' names, that kind of stuff? I think in the, I think, the process. I mean, obviously, client, not overall. I think in the, if they're your clients, you can capture all that information. Uh, the loan officer will give you their, their, that information, the, their home address, their birthday, because they have to collect that information up front, right? Um, but if they're your clients, you know, say, hey, I'm updating my, my database, what's your current mailing address, what's your birthday? And if they're your clients and you're asking for the birthday, they know you're gonna, you might send them something, they'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really quick, something that I didn't touch on, um, and it, it is on, because it's not a part of my 56 week, just like a part of us, it's not a part of my 56 week, the birthdays, right? Because that's just whenever it's a birthday is when I send something out. The last one I said I was going to talk about it, and I have it, so I'm going to talk about on this list, the bottom one, it says life events, right? Which is the same thing as this one right here. Life events. Life events, anybody have any guess what that could be? Birth, birthdays, yeah, birthdays, anniversaries. Yes, anniversaries. Weddings. Life, huh? Weddings. Weddings. Yeah, engagements. Babies. Uh, babies. All that is life events. So, graduation. How do I? Th th there's on Facebook. You can tell Facebook. I want to see these people. So there's. I've actually categorized them. They don't know that. The clients don't know that. But I've categorized. I would say eighty percent of them because a lot of them don't have Facebook or I haven't found them on Facebook. But I categorize a lot of these people um, on my top one hundred and fifty list. So if I tell Facebook, I want to see the top one hundred and fifty. And whatever they post, I stalk them on Facebook and I see if they have babies, if they got engaged, if they got, you know, birthdays. Uh, well, the birthdays I already, I already have in my uh, Big Purple Dot, it tells me, or Facebook tells me if it had a other birthday. And then I put it in Big Purple Dot in case they delete their Facebook, I always have their birthday somewhere. But they, on their, I send out flowers for any, like, you know, if a dog, if their pet passes away or a loss of a loved one, I send out flowers. Um, if they have a baby, I send a box of diapers. Uh, anniversaries, I send a, a big bottle of champagne. So depending on the live event, I'll send something out for the events. Uh, a really quick example of one, and I got this idea from, from Lizzie. Uh, my wife and I went to a staycation. So we went to a, a resort here in Scottsdale, and when we walked into our room, there's these chocolate-covered strawberries and a big uh, champagne bottle. And it was from Lizzie, my loan officer. How did she know I was going to be on here? And my wife's like, well, you put everything on social media, so that's how she found out. But it was cool that Lizzie saw that, and she called the resort and said, I want to buy this for these, and they put it on my, on there on my, on my, on my room, yeah. Uh, real quick, so Cheesecakes is the number one referral. What's the second? And uh, I, what are the top 10? My, my number one referral source is my, the referrals from clients. So even though most of them come on that week, mm -hmm. throughout the year, my referrals come from my, my top 150 list. Right, but I mean, I'm just asking is, are you getting more from the uh, movies or more from uh, like the videos or the demos? I can't track like what deals, right? The, deal, the referral comes in, I can tell you which month I get the most referrals. The month okay. of May, I get the most referrals. And right after, at the beginning of the year in January, I get the most referrals. So throughout throughout the year, I, I can't pinpoint which event gives me the most referrals. Um, but the phone calls is what prompts people to give you referrals. Oh yeah. That phone calls, getting in touch with people, is, and when you're calling them to add something of value, most likely they'll refer you, right? You're not calling just to say, hey, you have anybody who's buying, who's thinking about buying or selling. You're actually calling them to add some type of value. My biggest referral source is my top. I'll, I'll be done. My top 150 list, and then my second one is Zillow. Okay. All right. So, and then what I was going to say was I got that idea from Lizzie, and one of my clients went to stay at the area at Vegas, and I did the exact same thing, and they referred me a ton of business because I saw this this life event. You do this type of things for your clients, right? And you're, they'll never forget about you. You're going to be their number one agent unless a family member gives a real estate license and you're not their first one. Two more questions. What do you do for Christmas and for weddings? So for Christmas, I, I haven't stuck to one thing because uh, I get an idea and then I'll send it out and then 
I don't like the way it got delivered, or I don't like the way they got it. Um, so I always do like like fifteen dollar gift to my top one fifty list, and it can be, you know, like one time it was a, a, a like a little cylinder with Christmas cookies, and then they got there and there was the, the cylinder. The thing was kind of made of aluminum, and it got all bent because I didn't deliver them. I had the company deliver them. The cookies got all cracked. So every year, I haven't thought about what to send out something that would be consistent on, but I send out about fifteen dollar gift. Yes. Your closing gifts. It's a basket, and it's a basket with, uh, dip, I do, depending on the season, so I have a fall, I have a winter, I have a summer, uh, so depending on the, on the season, I'll do my closing gift. Uh, but knowing it's a basket that I spend $25 on, maybe $30 on. Okay, if somebody get divorced, and like the rent, you send something or no? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but um, I, uh, that's also, it's also really important that you capture so I get this question a lot. When people start doing the top 150, I get this question from my team members and from other agents that start doing the top 150 list. And when the people start actually doing the list, they ask me, do you also include the wife? Yeah, try to get the, 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 the spouse. Try to get, their phone, try to get their, their phone number and email too. Well, why? I can just send it to the husband. Because divorce happens, and it happens a lot. And uh, um, if you have both of their contact informations, you can send, you're always sending something out to both of them. Get both of their birthdays. Don't just get one. Try to get both phone numbers, both emails, and both birthdays. Okay, any other questions? Thank you guys for coming to the class. Uh, you guys can look me up and ask, get my phone number and ask me any other questions you may have or email me or text me. My phone number is on that folder. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Have a good one. Good. Good job, man. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Glad you're enjoying it.